ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board meeting on July 1st, 2024. I'd like to call this meeting to order. My name is Rachel Zenberry. I am the chair of the board. Um, and could I please ask that the other board members introduce themselves? Steve Revelock, good evening. Eugene Benson. Shana Corman Houston. Uh, and we also have Claire Ricker, the Director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, joining us this evening. Um, let's see. Uh, so we have uh, one public hearing on our docket this evening. It is the uh, opening of docket number 37, no, excuse me, the continuance of uh, docket number 3798 for 821 Massachusetts Avenue, continued from June 10th, 2024. Um, I would uh, first like to uh, turn this over to uh, Claire Ricker to uh, provide a brief overview from the perspective of the, de of the Department of Planning and Community Development. Then I'd like to turn this over to the uh, applicant for um, up to 10 minutes of an introductory presentation, at which time we'll turn it back over to the board for any uh, questions, clarifying questions. We'll open uh, the floor up to any members of the public who wish to speak on this, uh, on this item today, and then uh, the members of the board will uh, reconvene for a uh, discussion, and we'll decide whether or not to uh, take any vote this evening. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Director Ricker. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I will open with apologies for the technology this evening. Ordinarily, we have a, a neat board that we project on, um, but the, due to the elevator being out in this building, we haven't been able to have it in this room. So we're projecting onto the screen and we'll do our best for people to be able to see um, and for Mr. Rojas to make his uh, presentation. Um, this is an application by Noise uh, Realty um, to continue special permit um, for property at 821 Mass Ave. Um, the applicant proposes to demolish the existing building and construct a mixed use building on the property in a B4 vehicular oriented business district. Um, this applicant um, seeks uh, some relief um, from the landscape buffer. Um, landscaped areas adjacent to the parking area that could justify uh, a buffer area reduction per section 6.1.11. Um, and I think just in terms of the project itself, um, 821 Mass Ave is located in a B4 uh, vehicle oriented use district. Um, regarding B4 districts, uh, section 5.5.1E of the zoning bylaw states, Arlington has an abundance of automotive and automotive accessory sales and service establishments. As these businesses gradually close, the town has encouraged conversion of the property to other retail service office or residential use, particularly as part of a mixed use development. And while there is not uh, currently an, an auto use um, on that site, it is zoned for it. Um, I think the board can find uh, this project will um, meet the um, aspirations of the uh, zoning bylaw, at least in terms of constructing mixed use um, in the um, automotive uh, district. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, and with that, I'd like to uh, turn, it, turn it over to the applicants who are here with us this evening. If you could please introduce yourselves. Certainly, Madam Chair, Thank you. members of the board, Director Ricker. My name is Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor. I represent the applicant. With me is Andrus Rojas, the architect on the project. Um, I am taking over this matter for Attorney Anessi. Um, let me just say, I was uh, the attorney that represented CBS in connection with the special permit 15 years ago. And I can tell you, even back then, it was always the intention of, of the ARB that something be developed in connection with this property. Um, and we have presented you tonight, you're being presented with a mixed use. As a Director Ricker said, when you have a B4 uh, zoning district, if you can change it to some other type of use, that's preferred under the zoning bylaw. I would suggest to you that what is being proposed is um, in conformity with the master plan, and uh, with the bylaw and with the MBTA um, recent legislation. Um, the property, the project complies in all respects with the dimensional requirements and there's more than adequate uh, parking in this uh, proposed project. Um, the issues with respect to the special permit and with respect to environmental design review have all been briefed uh, and have been sent to you. I will not go through them. Uh, 
I would prefer that uh, Mr. Rojas, in his presentation, go through them. I think that's to, to expedite this matter. So, Andy? Great. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to need to speak to those drawings. Should I'm I stand sorry, could up? You, sure, and if you wouldn't mind just introducing oh. yourself for the record, oh, that sure. would be great, uh, too. My name Thank is you. Uh, Andres Rojas. I'm a principal at Rojas Design, a uh, firm in Boston that provides architectural, interior design, and landscape architectural services uh, since 1982. Um, been working on this for a while. We're proposing a mixed-use building. It's got approximately 16,800 square feet, including a 4,400 square foot basement that's completely below grade. The first floor could either be one or two um, office entities. If uh, I could flip forward, sure. keep going. A01, please. <clears throat> Next one. There you go. Um, the, the, the resolution isn't very good, but you can see on the left is the first floor plan, and there are the front of it, Massachusetts Avenue, is at the bottom. The, there are two office spaces shown, it could be one. The total is about 4,400 square feet uh, combined. In the rear, there is the entrance to the upstairs residential units and the rear residential unit, which is kind of like a townhouse. It's a three-story unit, self-contained. Um, all three residential units um, will have storage in the basement, as will the office spaces. Uh, they will have roof decks. They will have some side decks on the second floor. Each uh, residential unit, for example, unit one on the second floor is 2,383 square feet. Um, they're going to be very light, airy. The building is designed, if I could flip back to L01. Thank you. <clears throat> the building is designed such that we respect the courtyard of the church, which is directly to the right of it by pushing the main mass of the building further toward the CVS building. And also, the three-story height not having a shadow impact on that courtyard. So we're, we were trying to be extremely sensitive to the existing landscape surrounding the building. Um, we met with the tree warden. Um, we uh, went through the existing plant material on the site. I've had a um, certified Arborists look at all the plant material on the site. We had the tree warden look at our plant list and he approved the plants that we're proposing. We expect to add many more plants that are there now. Um, and if you could flip forward, I just want to show you what the building looks like from the outside to keep it brief. Keep going, please. Uh, the mass ab elevation is at the top. You can see the two office kind of taller storefronts at street level and then the apartments above with the balconies and then the roof decks at the very top. The rear elevation you can see the entrance to the three-story unit which is almost entirely there uh, with the first floor and then the bedrooms and so on on the second and third floor. It's kind of like a townhouse. Uh, building falls well within the dimensional requirements. It's about 36 feet high. And uh, we'll be, we'll, we expect to use, you know, aluminum clad panels as the exterior material mostly. Um, it'll be a, a, a very detailed building in terms of materials. We have these uh, shade device and separators that, these little fins that stick out. Again, very hard to see with these, uh, with the resolution you have here. But we're trying to, you know, limit the solar impact on the surfaces of the building where we can and also to direct the view toward uh, the church courtyard as opposed to Mass Ave. We're going to create a sustainable project. We're looking to do as much as we can for sustainability. I've given a list in the response to the EDR you know, criteria uh, for the different, the various um, sustainable things that we're going to do including lighting of course and electrical devices energy star appliances cool roofs trellis shading solar ready roof features sustainable less water intensive landscape non-invasive plant materials certainly and site and building cooling strategies to reduce climate impact 
Uh, we're also going to look carefully at waste reduction and recycling. And of course, we're the bylaw requires we're doing stormwater management. We will have a stormwater management plan in place that will be reviewed by all the parties and by the director of public works um, to handle all the stormwater generated from both the building and any hard surfaces. With that, I'm happy to answer questions. Great. Thank you. Let, me, let me just introduce, this is Mr. Noyes. Um, Great, thank you. Great to see you back, Mr. Noyes. Thank you for attending this evening. Um, so uh, thank you for the presentation and uh, for the introduction. Greatly appreciate that. Um, I will um, hand it over to my colleagues for any initial questions, but I, I do want to note a few items uh, from the required application materials, which um, I uh, believe that we're going to need to see before, and again, in my opinion, before we make a final decision. I'll um, certainly allow my other colleagues to, to weigh in, but I just want to run through a, sure. a, a short list of those. Um, so one is um, a lighting plan yeah. uh, for the site lighting, including fixtures, uh, a lead checklist, mm -hmm. which is required, mm -hmm. um, a stormwater management plan. I know that you said you were going to, to have one, but this board also likes to yep. um, review the, the plan as well. Um, a rendering um, and, and also an indication of facade materials. I know you started to speak to some of those and I'll have more comments on those later, but we will need to see, um, see those as well as color samples. Um, the elevations, we also have a requirement um, to see the context of the surroundings. Um, so that can uh, be both in uh, photos of existing conditions, but also understanding how the new property um, sits and falls relative to your uh, abutting properties as well. Um, and again, we're happy to, to send you a, a list of, of those as well. Great. So uh, I do have other comments, but I will hold on this, and we'll start with uh, Ken. Thank you. Um, I'm glad this project's back here, and we're moving ahead. It's been quite an eyesore for quite some time. Uh, I'm sure it has been for you guys to maintain. Um, I'm going to start off with the first question is, how did you guys ch chose three floors? Um, certainly by zoning, you can go higher and get more units in here. The, the uh, thinking was they wanted to be respectful of the church next door um, and not overshadow the church and the courtyard. Is that correct? That was part of it. That's right. and, um, the church has been a very good neighbor over the years, and we wanted to be respectful of the church. Yeah, it really, we started out with looking at what size building would be most appropriate, and we decided that based on the size, and it was a, you know, obviously in conversation with the owner and so on, that in context of the CVS and the church and its relationship to the courtyard there, that a three-story building would be the least impactful and still get the goal, still reach the goals that we were trying to achieve. So that's why we stopped at three. Also, uh, if we went more, obviously, there'd be requirements for elevators. It just it expands the project scope. Okay. Um, if you can, um, when you resubmit uh, more documents, can you do a quick outline study of a, sh a shadow study of a three-story building and a five-story building show me <clears throat> what kind of shadow you're, you're creating on the church. Um, we can look you, at that. What you said, you know, I, I trust you what you said. I just want to see what yeah. impact. I'm just asking because there's an opportunity here to get more housing in here and then maybe get uh, one inclusive, you know, affordable housing in here. And I'm just asking, you know, why don't we do that and take advantage of some of those benefits actually uh, have just by having a zoning agreed now, you know? So uh, that's just the first question, okay? And then, Good. Okay. Um, but all the question right now is how you guys treat the front facade along Mass Ave, okay? Um, by looking at this, my first ask is, uh, would it be too much trouble to relocate that stairway that's in the front elevation to the back. 
so that you would have a clear frontage for retail. So it gives you, uh, I'm trying to give you the most advantage for uh, office space, retail space, so that it seems wide and, and, uh, and, and give you the most opportunity for that to help it happen and develop. When you split it up in the middle like that and you have one window, one window on one side, it very much limits yourself to what you can do there. And by doing that, you, you may not, you, you, I'm not saying you're not going to, but it would be, be more difficult to rent that space. You know, if you have it more flexible, where you said earlier, it could be one space or two space, but not having something in the middle would get rid of that, would, would help that, uh, encourage that. And it, it would encourage the activation of the street. I mean, one of the things that we're, we're trying to go here for is if this project here uh, helps activate the streetscape a little bit. Uh, as you go by there uh, in the afternoons, you know, CBS is, is teeming with kids coming and going and getting stuff. There's a lot of activity there. And I think, you know, it's a continuation of that. It, it'll be good. Uh, you know, walking along that street there, I do my fitness walk there by all the time just because I have to get my miles in or steps. Um, you know, having a daycare center there is, it, uh, on the church is great, seeing that kind of activity there. You just, you want to, you want to encourage more street life. And I think having it more flexible by having it more wide open and more um, welcoming, instead of just a couple of bay windows. You know, having it a big storefront all the way across would be, would be better. These, these are big, bigger things I'm, I'm, I'm just mentioning right now, okay? And then on the back side of it, you say this looks more like a townhouse. Uh, if you shift, if you look at the back parking lot, can you go to, uh, I don't know, your landscaping L02? Uh, yeah, that's what, that one's fine. See how you can, you can shift the parking that's along the, uh, where all the trees are, shift it down a little bit more so that you have less of a curve there. You can pull the parking spaces against the building further away from the building, giving you a little bit more of a front yard. Right now, there is no front yard. It's just, it's just parking, sidewalk, and, and building. Uh, if you if you're sort of intending that to be a front yard, like like a three-story brownstone or what you what you mentioned, yeah, I, I, I like that attitude. You, you, you give you an opportunity for that to happen. If you had a, maybe a little front yard there by sliding the parking down a little more, you could do that. I mean, these, these, I'm just mentioning small incremental changes, you know? And I think by shifting that, uh, the stairway over, you, you can easily do that. Just because it, it, the travel distance is still fine and all the else based on how things are laid out. I, I don't see that being an issue. So, those are the I mean, major big issues there. Um, I would like to see this building adjacent to the CVS, the church, and, and maybe a little further down the street where the one-story strip building is, just so we see the context how this building fits in that in, in, uh, in the uh, street edge there. Um, I just not seeing it really blend in with the rhythm right now. So you know, it would be nice if we just. Yeah, it did that, okay? And uh, since there is no elevator, right? No. Nope. That's why we also need two sets of stairs, which is why you need one up front eventually. No. Whether it's in the middle no, or on the side. On the side, yeah. Inside, yeah, okay? So which unit is handicapped? Accessible. There is no accessible unit. It's not required in three units. Okay. I'll leave that up to the building officials, Commissioner. Okay, I just ran into this before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, one units worked, and I, I asked. Obviously, if obviously if we, if the building were to grow, the need for an accessible unit would be there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's no accessible unit right now. No. I'll leave 
I'm going to come and sit right there for now. Okay. I'll come back maybe some more, but I want to give everybody a chance to speak to you. Sure I don't want to say too much here All right. right away. Thank you, Ken. Shana? Um, so could you, uh, could you tell me how far the building is from the church at the narrowest point? Um, you, you mentioned how far it is from the property line, but the setback from the church building would be helpful to know. We, I don't have that readily available, but we can obviously get that. Okay, it would be it would be great, sort of in the same vein, um, to have uh, dimensions on on a site plan other than on the survey. Um, uh, so so the site plan itself is not is not dimensioned. The survey is dimensioned, but um, it would be helpful to see that in other places. Um, and and also um, similarly, the CVS is is shown on one of the site plans, and that's helpful for context um, for the relation of the two buildings. It would be helpful to see uh, the profile of um, of a portion of the church yeah, on one of the site sense. plans. Um, is this intended as? Uh, rental or for sale housing? It's for rental. For rental. Okay. Um, so, so I noticed that um, that you are designing um, the property as solar ready and um, not as having um, solar, not as having solar panels on it. That may not be in accordance with the bylaw. My read of the bylaw is that um, is that you will need to do a solar assessment and uh, show us that it is prohibitive to do to do solar. Bring in a company and do that. Um, in my experience with condos, it might be more difficult. But with rental, uh, I don't see any reason why it should be a problem. Um, Unless there's, I don't know what, something about about the shade, but uh, we'll have a solar assessment. A solar assessment could tell you that. Um, let's see. So, computer is not working here. All right. Um, where, where inside the building are the Bike parking spaces. Located. They're not inside. They're outside. They're all of them are outside. I saw that there were five. Um, yeah, they're the, blue bike racks. Yep. Okay. So so this chart looks like there, five. Your your zoning chart looks like there are five inside and five outside. So all right, oh. that's a helpful clarification. It should. It should. They're only all outside. Right. Only outside. Uh, why, can you tell me about the selection for office in the commercial space? Um, uh, why, why you're aiming for office as opposed to some other use? Um, was there a market study done or is that your inclination? It could be retail or office, but because of the lease with CVS, Oh, and and right. I'm That's I'm sorry. If I can we just have a little bit of HVAC noise. If I could just ask That's you to project not only for our benefit but for those people because who are of the lease with CVS, there are all kinds of prohibitions as to retail uses. Mm -hmm. That was done a long time ago. That's why. So and and or restaurant. Yeah. So so there are limitations yeah. on the use. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, and I would I would echo Kin's comments about about thinking about the design of the building for the flexibility of that use. Um, uh, you know, if if it needs to be office space because of because of deed restrictions or what have you, that's um, that's fine. But if if it is possible to look at that layout, that would be that would be great. Can I ask a clarifying question before you mm -hmm. move on? Do you have a specific type of office use that you are targeting or specific um, functions in mind for that space? Okay. I mean, that, that might be something that I, I think would be helpful is to understand, again, 
you know, are you looking at this as a professional services for, you know, just again, trying to understand the type of office use as we're looking at, to Kim's point, um, street activation would, would be helpful for the board to understand. What's most needed? And again, I would ask you to, to think about how you're going to market it. Thank you. I would, I would echo, I would echo Ms. Zenberry's list about um, about the need for a stormwater report. Um, actually, I would echo the, her full list. Um, we will send that. So yeah. <laughs> um, um, Also from your list. And has the fire department taken a look at, at your site plan? No. Nice. Okay. Um, uh, I, yep, yeah, uh, I would encourage you to have the fire department take a look at, at the site plan. Um, Sooner rather than later. Um, yep. And I think that's I think that's all I have for the moment. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Shana. Jean. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you for bringing a proposal to us. It's nice to see something moving forward. I'd like to do two things. One is talk about all the things that are missing and incorrect in the application, some of which have been highlighted by some of my colleagues. And then I have a number of questions. Um, and all of these are in the required submittal checklist, which is part of the application. So I was very surprised to see all of these checked off, but finding very little of them actually provided with the application. So. Um, for example, section 6.4 of the zoning bylaw and our rules and regulations require a solar energy system assessment. And unless you can show that it's inappropriate, solar has to be on at least 50% of the roof. So that's going to require you to change the plans of the roof decks, I would think, since you're going to have to have solar arrays on at least 50% of the roof, unless you meet one of the criteria in the bylaw that would allow us to reduce or waive that requirement. So um, that's missing. As, as Ms. Zemberry mentioned, the lead checklist and a narrative also are missing and need to be provided. Um, the drawings of the proposed structure, you had some of them, but you didn't have the photographs that are required of what's on the parcel and on the neighboring parcels so that we can all get a look at the context as Mr. Lau mentioned. Um, I'm wondering, I would like to see a copy of the lease um, with CVS. And if some of it has to be redacted, some of it has to be redacted. But what I would like to see that's part of the release are four things. I would like to see um, that you can't have retail or whatever else you're not allowed to have in that building. Um, I'd like to see that um, the leasehold, the drawing shows the leasehold lines. I'd like to see how that's described in the lease so that I can understand how you came up with the lines. I'd like to know that you have an easement or a right of way so that people who access the building and park in the back can drive through the CVS lot. So I'd like to see that also. And um, I'd also 
like to see if there are any easements or rights of way. Excuse me, sorry. Easements, rights of way, things like that, um, that are there. Um, and if you have to, as they say, redact parts of the of the uh, lease for business purposes, that's fine. But or just provide excerpts of those well, I'd rather, sections? I'd rather have it redacted so we can see. The lease is, let me just say, the lease is very long. That's why I'm and, suggesting, I think, yeah. if you can provide and the excerpts. And I know excerpts. CBS will not agree to let us provide you that lease. But I, I, I don't want the lease, I just want the parts that I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, the excerpts. Okay, thank uh, you. We'll, we'll ask them to get, we'll get permission. Okay. Um, vehicle, bicycle, and service plans, which are also listed here. You have the bicycle numbers wrong as I calculate them. As I calculate them, you require one long-term space and two short-term spaces because three-unit residential doesn't require bicycle parking, so it depends on the size of the two units. The long-term unit must be inside, can't be outside, and you have to have at least two units outside and the units preferable, or the bicycle parking things, preferably need to be in front of the building unless you meet the criteria to put them somewhere else. Theory is somebody comes up with a bicycle, they see the bicycle rack right there. If you can't put them there, you have to put a sign up that says where the bicycle rack is. Um, and access, I'll add as well, there's no currently no access from the front. To well, the to the well, that, I was well. going to get to. Sorry, that. I jumped okay. ahead. I'll, I'll, I thought yeah, I was, was just amplifying yeah, you your are, comment. You are, but, <laughs> but you are right. But um, and and the bicycle in, indoor cannot be one that has to be carried downstairs. So you're going to have to find a place mm -hmm. of access for it. Um, I'm going to go to the next missing missing piece. Um, Okay, next is um, open space numbers. The plan, the application you submitted has not applicable on the open space numbers. So that's not right. So I would expect an application that has the open space numbers. In addition, the application and the bylaw requires that you provide information on how you calculated the FAR and how you calculated the gross floor area. Neither of those were provided with the application. They're required so we can actually take a look at those and see. And it's, it's interesting, and, and I want you to think about this, it's one lot. So when, as I read the bylaw, and maybe my colleagues will read it slightly differently, it's one lot. So the, I think the FAR and the GFA have to include CVS as well as this building and the whole lot. We'll look at that. It is one so, lot. Yes, yeah, so you need to look at that and figure out um, how to do that and give us the numbers that are appropriate for that. And as my colleague mentioned, a lighting plan. Now, the application says eight parking spaces are required, but only three I, you're parking correct. places yeah. are we required. That there were so that will need to be redone also, uh, same with the bicycle numbers, which are wrong. How will the residents access their residential units? How will they get in and how will their visitors get in to their units? The, either, if, either through the back parking lot, mm -hmm. which you can enter all three units, mm -hmm. or the two front units can enter through Mass Ave. The okay. two um, second and third floor units. Yeah. I mean, this came up the one time we presented a plan to us a couple of years ago. I don't like the idea of someone having to walk through the CVS parking lot to get to their unit and for visitors to get to their unit. Um, to what Ms. Zenberry said, I think there needs to be a walkway okay. so when visitors or residents get there, they don't have to walk through the parking lot and that's not the greatest parking lot to walk through. I don't know so you mean so that they can park on Mass Ave? Well, e either park on Mass Ave or maybe walk they're biking, in. or yeah. guess what? Maybe they took the bus, or maybe they walked into Arlington you know, Center to go to a coffee shop or something like that. 
So there needs to be yeah. a way for That's them to good idea. walk in without having to go through the parking lot. Um, this follows up. I'm real interested in knowing what the rental market is for what you're proposing for their offices. And it would be helpful to see that because I think one of the things that um, we need to look at is if there's actually a market for these or whether um, there's too much of it already in the immediate neighborhood. Because the last thing I think we want to do is approve a building where offices sit vacant for a long time. So I think we need some information about that. Um, we've gotten a lot of emails about the Scotch Pine tree that's sort of just to the right near the front of the building. And I wondered if when you consulted with the tree warden, if he gave you any opinion as of the health of that tree. We did look at it. We looked at every tree on site. Yeah. And uh, he did not think it was a valuable tree. Uh, I had a, a certified arborist look at it independently to give me an evaluation. I mean, I'm certainly interested in saving trees where possible. But it's not in great physical condition. It's not in great uh, aesthetic condition. It's not a very, you know, useful tree in terms of what it does to the site. It creates year-round shade, um, which is not great in the winter, uh, particularly as it's on the side of the courtyard side. Uh, it's the tallest tree on the site, projects the longest shadow. So many of those, you know, criteria were talked about with Tim at the site and he gave us a letter saying that he agreed with our removal plan and he I sent him our proposed plan to get input as to whether the trees and plants we were proposing were consistent with the town's goals and he wrote a letter saying they were well, um, we don't have the letter do I, I gave it to Claire today oh, okay great we, what we can do is we can follow up if you are um, amenable to that, include that as part of the package when you Sure, return. absolutely. Thank you. What, what I'm hoping to do is, I, apparently the tree warden's on vacation yeah. this week. Um, what I'd like to have him do is take a look at the tree when he's back and assess the health of the tree. Sure. Um, and I hope it will be okay for him to walk on the property to be able to yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. Fine. We, so we, we can you know, spent a good bit of time That's walking me. the property yeah. before, so it's um, not a problem. Because I looked at the tree too, and I am not a tree expert, but there's an awful lot of very bad brown foliage on the trees, and shape. those trees often suffer from pine wilt disease, especially those sorts of trees, which eventually kill them. I have no idea whether that tree has it. I just noticed it has something that's very characteristic of that type of disease, so I'm interested. The other thing I found interesting about the tree, and I went at a couple different times of the day, is a combination of how far back it is from the sidewalk and the roadway and the direction of the street at that point. Even in the middle of the day, it casts absolutely no shade on the sidewalk or on Mass Ave. The shade either went towards CVS or toward the church. I, I think that maybe in winter, when the sun's a lot lower, it may cast a little shade when we don't really need it. But um, I found that interesting to look at because we talk a lot about um, heat island effects, and I'm not sure this tree does very much for the heat island effects, but I am still interested in seeing whether the tree is healthy or not. Um, you know, there are a lot of people here who I think probably, some of them at least, want you to save the tree. And I wonder, is it possible, if that were the goal, to pull the building back enough to save the tree. You don't really need those four parking spaces in back of, right in back of the building, 
because you have another six on the side and you really only need three parking spaces um, to meet the requirements. So I'm wondering if you have taken a look at the potential of pulling the building back um, enough to preserve the tree. I'm not sure the tree needs to be preserved. I just think we need to understand. There's that. competing goals there, Go obviously, because Go I mean, talk about activating the street line. We're trying to be more consistent with the, right. the facade line that's currently there, particularly as established by CBS. We thought that would be more important toward activating the Mass Ave street front uh, than pushing the building back. Also, again, you mentioned the leasing line, okay. The leasing line in the back there, and this is to your point as well, Mr. Lau, is the, it's right at the back of the existing parking. So there is no pushing that parking back. It's either you get rid of it, rid of it. you know, which is what you're saying. Which we'll look at. I'm not but saying the first, have to do the it. first assessment is whether the tree is viable. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And, I think, and I think we'll need to have a discussion before you, before you take a look at anything, we'll, we'll go have a discussion as a yeah. board as to whether that's something we're going to ask you okay. to do. That's right, right, yeah. right. thank you, because yeah. I think you make a good point about having the front of the building closer. So there, there are competing, there are competing um, things about that. So um, also I think you misspoke when you said the two offices, I think you said were 4,400 square feet. But no, they're no, the floor, the floor plate is well, forty-five. Right. It's like thirty. The offices are, if I added up the numbers, right, two thousand four hundred. Two thousand four hundred, correct. The floor plate, the, the floor plate of the first floor is forty-four. Okay, including right. including the the rear. Area. Area. Correct. Thank you. Okay, so I would suggest that you need to give us a new yep. application. I, that's, attorney has to get all of that too. Yeah, I, I understand you were not involved at that point, um, and I should have mentioned that. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we need a new application that's complete and accurate. Thank you, Gene. Steve. Um, well, my colleagues have uh, turned out to have asked a number of the questions I was going to, but I'll, I do have a few. Um, one, I, uh, I will agree with the notion of providing a walkway to the back. I think the west side of the building um, between, this, between the building and CBS, it looks like he's got a mudroom towards the back, uh, that seems like a good location. You know, for example, maybe maybe one of your tenants, you know, ran out to Whole Foods, for example. You know, just went to, you know, run across yeah, yeah. the street and come back. It makes sense. Um, regarding the long-term and short-term bicycle spaces, um, the, there is a requirement that long-term spaces be, you know, covered or secured. Uh, it's section 6112 of the bylaw. I just ask you to encourage you to, um, Review that before, oh. and it would be it would be nice to see the um, you know the spaces outlined on, on a plan. Um, so the ten parking spaces, it looks like they're the existing ones. Well, there, with slight modification, turning one of them into an accessible. Oh, uh, okay, okay, yeah. But um, yes, the same ten spaces. You know, my first reaction was for for this particular use, twenty four hundred square feet of office and three residential units, 10 spaces to me seems like way over parked. Um, but we have minimums rather than maximums. Um, I would personally not mind seeing a few of them go away, but you know, I don't know how my co colleagues would, would feel about that. I'll okay. that to our discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Ms. Corman Houston mentioned the requirement for 50% rooftop solar or a study showing that it's infeasible. Mm -hmm. Although I love the idea of the roof deck, um, unfortunately, the solar requirement is you know, the solar requirement is part of our bylaw. And uh, lastly, um, if we could have a front rendering showed, I was shown. I was just wondering, um, approximately, where were you contemplating the signage for the commercial spaces? There's not really a, a sign ban, but I suppose window signs would yeah, be. Yeah, we were thinking window signs. As, as office space, it's not quite as critical as retail. Okay. All right. So we were thinking that they would be on the windows, the large lower window panes themselves. And also, obviously, there'd be a building number, uh, you know, in this. I think it's shown on one, at least yeah, one of them. In, in this case, over the central entrance to the stair. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And um, finally, I look forward to seeing some material samples. Yeah, we're going to do a materials board. Obviously, we're you know we we obviously didn't want to go overboard here and get beyond ourselves. That's why some of this stuff isn't ready. But we're totally committed to delivering. The, we want to do a materials board, and we have a 3D SketchUp model that we're elaborating further, and we'll send you that as well. You'll have. It. Great. Anything else, Steve? That, that is it. Okay. Um, I have a couple other items. Um, one item is a question around uh, your mechanical units. Where will, will those sit? I didn't see those indicated either on the site or on the, the roof of the building. So um, I don't know if you have an answer for that or if that's something you can show when you come back. Yes, we will show. Okay. Um, the same thing with the venting. I would assume that um, you're running your vents through the roof and not through the, the walls of the building. Um, if that's something that, again, we, um, given the fact that you have roof decks and, and perhaps solar that solar. you're looking, you know, as well as potentially mechanical units, I would just ask you to think about that as well for the for the roof plan. Definitely be thought. Okay. Um, Steve asked about signage. I would just suggest that, um, you know, potentially additionally thinking to thinking around um, window signage in order for somebody to find a space, sometimes depending on solar glare, that can be difficult to see. So even for an office space, you might want to think around whether or not there's a, um, even if it's not a large building sign, if there's a blade sign or again something else that is that is smaller in some way that's affixed in some way to the to the building. Um, I, I think that would be again as you start to look at what who your potential tenants right. might be in terms of what their business is. That might be something you know just. I would encourage you just to look at the way the other and, and obviously office, we're going to comply tenants, with the signage code, which is great. Yeah, I just architecturally, yeah. I think it needs to be yeah, thought of as a whole. Good point. Um, the same thing with the way that you're affixing the numbers to the building. Is that you know standing on top of the canopy? Is that affixed to the building? Is that lit? Is it not? That would be good to to know since that is one of the signs that you are showing. Yeah. Um, Building materials, I believe I heard you say that the siding, you were looking at an aluminum clad product? We're panels. We're looking aluminum at different panels. Different panels. So but ACM. both, uh, both, um, uh, both aluminum clad insulated panels as well as um, composite panels. Okay. Um, what we I haven't made a final decision, but sure. we will show you the materials uh, and a rendering of that. That's great. Um, I would just point out that um, I think that between the stone church, you know, quality of the facade, both in the stone church and quite frankly, CVS did a nice job with their uh, facade as well um, to just think about, again, the, the level of, of quality and finish uh, because you are next to a, you know, very historic stone, um, stone building. It does not have to be, I'm not asking for this to be, um, traditional right, right. in any way but again to, to, to we will really be sensitive to that and many of the panels we're looking at um, some of them anyway come in a wood surface finish okay and that can be very attractive you know fully modern forward as some of the others right. understood again just wanted to yep. bring that up so it's not a surprise when no, we see the materials at, at your next meeting um, Trash um, for the office tenants and the um, and the residences. Will they be utilizing the dumpster enclosure in the back, or will they have their own uh, trash enclosure? They're going to have to have their own. Okay, so we'd need that to be shown on the site too, please. That's what you always get. I stole your thunder with that one. Um, let's see. And exterior, we talked around. The other item I'm curious about, I saw that you included one um, public shade tree along the, the sidewalk, one one new shade tree, I believe, right. in, the, in the plan. Um, again, looking at this as, it, this is one site, um, including CVS, when we see the, the larger site plan that includes the entire site, I'd like to see, you know, whether or not the bylaw requirement is met for the entire site the with entire regard yeah. to the 25 feet, um, uh, every 25. So 
again, I'll talk to my other colleagues, but um, I, I, if that is not the case, in addition to directly in front of this property, I would want to look at the entire CVS frontage, the entire site, no, since it's one site, that, and make sure that we're in compliance there. We'll look at that. Great. Um, and that's all that I have. Ken, you had one other item that yeah, you, you got, wanted to you mention? Got, you've got a couple of them already. Okay. okay. But the one I do want to talk about is, could we having a um, uh, patios on the, on the roof? Yes. Uh, so can you show me a section through that later on? Oh, yeah. And then show show me railings. That's going to be a that's that's going to be will be seen from the street. Yeah. Uh, no, the, the, either the railings or the parapets that you know are required to you know be around a patio or or a roof deck like that will be shown. Yeah, but if you choose to use to go the parapet, it's definitely going to change your. Um, the portions of the elevation here, and you'll bring the right. line up, we'll, and it's we'll going it, it may not in the front, but maybe use those. For, uh, I'm just saying it's going to yep. affect the design and how it looks. That's all I'm saying. If you're going to have uh, two patterns out there, show the railings, and if you don't, that's fine too. And then um, I think what Rachel said earlier, uh, I'll take, don't want to repeat, but I mean, we just thought that it's important to provide private personal open space to each unit. Which is fine. I appreciate roof, that. You know, no, no, it's fine. But it would be very pleasant up there. But let's yeah. show how you guys are going to enclose that. Absolutely. And the same thing in uh, mechanical pens, if you're going to plan for that on the roof. Uh, Great. Um, so um, before we open this up for public comment, the two items, I know, I know and I've been keeping a long list, we'll review this with you before the um, after public comment and after any additional board discussion to make sure that we're all in alignment. Um, just for the board, two areas that I flagged for discussion following public comment are the question that Jean brought up around our, our thoughts around how this building is sited relative to the, to the street um, and uh, parking specifically the um, and I apologize, I'm not on the, the site plan. It's either the, oh, here it is right here, the three or four, the four um, spaces that are directly behind the unit and, and Kim's suggesting, obviously, if we did anything with that, we would need to relocate the um, accessible um, plan. But I think that's something I'd like the, the board to discuss. Were there any I other items? Obviously, there's a lot for follow-up, but any other items where perhaps we needed some board discussion that we have flagged right now? The biggest okay. thing was the um, location of the building okay. and then uh, yeah, the parking. Great. The well, floor. I if it's okay with the board, I think I'll hold that and then I'll open public comment at this time. Okay, great. So with that, uh, I will open this hearing up for public comment. Anyone uh, wishing to speak, please uh, raise your hand. Um, I will, once I, <laughs> one second, once I call on you, um, what I'll do is I will ask you to please come to uh, one of these two seats here in the in the front so that we can pick you up on the microphone. You'll have up to three minutes to address the board. Um, I will also ask you to please introduce yourself by your first, last name, and street address. I'll now open it up. So I believe, sir, that you have raised your hand. Uh, good evening. Uh, John Rogers, Gray Street. Please, John please. Rogers, Gray Street. First of all, I would like to commend, I am, I've been a member of the church for 49 years since I moved to Arlington. I would like to commend the Noyes family and the architectural firm for going ahead with the three-story building. I realize the bylaws say you can go five, but it's my, my opinion that the bylaws doesn't say you have to go five. Um, my, or our concern is the buffer between the property and the church. Um, is it going to be any kind of a solid buffer? Because as of the present, people use our parking lot and walk through into CVS, plus the high school kids back and forth. And honestly, for at least two years, your fence has been laying down on our property, and we have been unable to get response from the Noyes family as far as right, the first it, as far as repairing it, the fence. And just you know, and again, I'm going to just pause your time here. Um, what we'll do is uh, we'll we'll take all comments and questions, and we'll address them at the end rather than. Okay, uh, so I was just wondering what the buffer was going yep, to be. And so we'll make sure to answer answer your question on that, but I, just, so that we don't 
interrupt your time with um, a back okay. and forth. I just wanted to yeah. make that clear for everyone. So I'll go ahead and restart uh, your time. That's that's basically the only uh, the only question that I you know comment and question that I that I have. Great. Uh, I think the building will fit in nicely as planned. Great. Thank you Thank so you. much. Appreciate it. All right. Anyone else? What should we speak? Please. Thank you. Um, Susan Stamps, 39 Grafton Street, um, speaking for the Tree Committee. We have looked at this plan um, and we had a few comments. The, um, we agree with a, a lot of the uh, people who wrote you letters that it would be great to, to save the 22 inch DBH Scotch Pine. Um, we thought maybe the, the, the house could be moved a little bit to the left and that that would leave room for the scotch pine. Um, so I, I thought maybe they, we could, they could look at that. We don't want to see it come down. We know that um, big old trees like that absorb a huge amount of carbon. And there's a lot of carbon emitted on Mass Ave, so it would be nice to be able to, shape, to uh, save it. I also wonder, in terms of the stormwater management plan, which uh, the proponents said they have, uh, but I'm not sure they submitted, um, what would happen to stormwater were that huge tree and its huge roots to be removed? And I think that's something to take into consideration if that tree is removed. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? The, um, yes, I wanted to bring up the Article 10 of the special town meeting last fall that required developers of projects like this to plant a street tree every 25 feet. Um, I think it would be great if the board would require that the street tree or trees that are planted would be large shade trees um, because that is an area of town that really needs shade. It would be really good. Um, and that even if it doesn't, for some reason that bylaw doesn't apply or, you know, like to ask them to plant trees in front of the property anyway, there will be room to do that. And. Um, I did have a question about what the tree warden had to say. Uh, the tree warden may have said, that, you know, I mean, the tree bylaw doesn't the tree bylaw doesn't apply. So the tree warden may have felt he didn't really have any jurisdiction to give an opinion about anything else. Um, and I'm glad you're asking for a, a letter from the arborist about the health of the tree. And then finally, the um, the town does have tree construction guidelines. They're on the, um, the Public Works page, uh, Trees page on the town website. And um, we'd like to ask that those be incorporated in the special permit that the, that, um, the developer has to follow those construction guidelines to uh, uh, protect not only the many trees on the site, but also the trees on the neighboring church site as well. Whose roots could be hurt a lot by the heavy equipment and so on. And I think that's all I had. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak? Please. Hi. Winnell Evans, Orchard Place. Thank you all. Um, the board covered a lot of the points that I had, but I did just want to, surprise, surprise, present a contradictory point of view. I would love to see the building pushed back so that it was more in line with the facade of the church minus the porch. I think it would make continuity with that side yard of the church and it also balances the playground and the green space on the other side of the church. And as several people have pointed out, this is, this is a, you know, we, ha we have to have more green space. We have to have more trees. We cannot keep sacrificing them to redevelopment. Um, so that would be a request to seriously consider greater front setback. Um, obviously saving as many trees as possible on the site would, would be desirable. Um, and my other thing is kind of a picky procedural question. The original current special permit says that in order to demolish that special permit must be amended. And my understanding is that what's happening tonight is that an entirely new special permit is being discussed. So I just want to bring that up and make sure that that is not lost in the mix. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak this evening? Uh, 
Karen Holman, 12 Whittemore Street. Uh, a concern and, and a comment. Um, an earlier plan, I, I looked at this, there are three units and only three living units. An earlier plan had seven units. Arlington needs more affordable housing. I don't think I need to ask for estimates of the rent, knowing the square footage here, to know that these units are going to be anything but affordable. They certainly are not. I would like to see this go back to the six or seven units, which would include one affordable unit. That's what Arlington needs, more affordable units. Second thing is, uh, before coming here, I consulted my local AI about what the meeting minutes of this would show, and I'd like to offer to you, I don't know whether I should provide one copy or multiple copies, a draft proposal for your minutes for this. So to whom should I submit this? I, I, I'm not sure what your intent in terms of a draft meeting oh, call, minutes. Call it, my, call it my comments written. Oh, sure. You can submit that to okay. uh, Director Rickard. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak this evening? Please. Hi, I'm uh, Marina Popova. Um, I live at 255 East Street. Uh, so I really came here to speak for the trip. For this one. Can you speak up just a little bit? Speak up. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I always speak very clear and I'm nervous, so I came here to really speak for this 100-year-old tree. I know that every tree is a treasure that stands between us and the climate change, you know, disasters that are unfolding. But this specific tree, it is more than just any other tree. How many 100-year-old trees we actually have in Arlington? I don't think that it's that many. Preserving this tree is like preserving our history, preserving the history of Arlington for everyone to see. I'm very sad to see that historical house destroyed, to be honest. I believe that this is a very you know, big mistake, but I understand that we need commercial space, we need new development. But the tree, the tree can be saved. And what is important is that it is actually feasible. So I understand, when I see that the plan is saying that you know, this is preservation of this landscape and tree is not really, you know, possible. I think that this is not true because the original plan that was, you know, submitted in the 2020, it actually did preserve this tree because the building was shifted a little bit. And this is not the only solution. I actually did Google of, you know, different solutions of how to use big trees as actually a gem and the masterpiece of your design, and there are many. You can have a courtyard, beautiful, you know, where the tree is really like the point of interest. So there are many ways to incorporate that tree. And that's what I really, really asking you to please consider. And just one other thing that I wanted to mention, I'm glad that you mentioned that tree by law. So I looked actually at the total length of that whole parcel, the CVS plus the tree, and it is uh, 291 feet. So if we will use the whole length of the parcel as the guiding uh, length, right, then actually there should be 12 public trees if we are considering 25 feet. Just one point for consideration, right? Uh, and, and basically what I just wanted to say that I really trust that our redevelopment board values the you know, opinion and interests of Arlington as a town and our community. And I just actually created a petition to see how many people really care about that tree. And we already have 300 signatures. People already really care about this one historical tree. And this is just less than four days because it's been, you know, I just created it just now. I think that in a given time, many, many more people will be really thankful to you to, you know, to reconsider this plan and try to incorporate that tree as part of the design. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak this evening, please? Great, thanks. I don't usually need a mic, but I will sit up here. My name is Cheryl Balls, I live up on Peck Ave. Um, I'm a townie. I have my mother who is also a townie. She's almost as old as the tree. 
Um, and I understand, first of all, I really want to applaud you for making sure that, you know, the shadow, I, I, for many years I worked at Brandeis, and one of the things that was wonderful about Brandeis is they made sure that when they de designed the chapels is that the shadow never overshadowed the other chapel, the three separate chapels. So I think that's very important. If the tree cannot be saved, I would love to see that somehow it be made available to members of this community. I think that would be really, I don't know how, I haven't given that a lot of thought, but I'm thinking about how can we make that a part of this community. Um, I think the, the importance of being a part of this town and what really is so important about monotony, the battle, and everything else, it needs to be given back to this community, especially to those of us that are lifelong town members. I would also, only other comment, you've all brought up some really wonderful things, applaud you. The only thing I haven't heard anything about what about a charging station for a car? So that would be my only other thing. Because I have a hybrid, I, w I know I would be more interested if I had a place someplace that I could charge a car. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I hope to see you at the pain mass challenge. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Karen Finale. I live on Brattle Street. I'm also concerned about the cutting down of seven trees for this project. Um, I live in a, a place where all, all my trees nearby have recently been cut down for a luxury condo building. And it just concerns me that the, the entire landscape of the town is changing for more and more development and less you know, the trees, including the 70-foot plane tree on Mass Ave was cut down. And, you know, I don't know the health of the tree. I'd love to see that report, but it's not just that tree. It's seven other trees. So replanting will take decades to get to a, any kind of height. So that's just a concern that I have. And the historic, you know, appeal of Arlington is just kind of disappearing for me at least. So I, please, you know, trees are important. They're not just shade. They're also aesthetic value. They're, they're support animals and wildlife. And, you know, I'd rather live next to a tree than, you know, commercial space. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Please. And on repeat of uh, 438 myself. So I would uh, like to support the project that we, are, if we are getting more any kind of housing would be better. I guess the more housing the better, but I understand there is, like the higher you go, there is an issue with the church and an issue with uh, just building the elevator and making it more expensive. Not sure if you can put affordable housing there. But I, I, I mean, I'm sure I missed whether you, it's gas heated or electric heated. I would, I would like to not be a gas heated thingy. And yeah, same for the oven. Um, and yeah, just, just generally we would like to get more housing. Um, and I'm also interested in whether, how you like the meeting overall and what's your issues with getting anything done here. That's it. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak this evening? Okay, seeing none, uh, we will close uh, public comment for this evening. Um, and I will turn it back to the board for discussion. Um, but actually first, there were a couple of follow-up items that um, I, I may pose to, to you as, as, as questions, uh, just to address some of the, the comments that were made this evening. Um, the first is if you could clarify, uh, there was a question around the uh, the, the buffer specifically whether the fencing will be retained or replaced between the church and the, the property. So if you could speak to, to that, that would be. Well, currently the front part of that strip toward Mass Ave does not have Correct. a fence. Right. And we're 
enhancing the landscape buffer there with new plantings and you know con continuity of that landscape into this property. Um, there won't be a fence going toward Mass Ave. Uh, now in the back of the property, I'm not, we're, since we're not dealing with that back there, behind that long strip of parking that CVS property, uh, or the CVS leasehold, uh, we're, we're not charged with dealing with that. If there's an issue with that, I think the owner could address it. Sure, um, I think again, since this is one lot, yeah. Um, yeah. that we would most likely, um, as a board, discuss whether it, we would not this evening, but in, in the future, I think we would discuss whether or not that would be a condition of the permit to ensure that that um, buffer is uh, appropriately maintained. Okay. Great. And um, we'll look at it. Okay. Uh, the next question I would have for you, there have been some questions around perhaps pushing the um, the building back, and I believe that you addressed this, but if you could just clarify for the, the board um, the, the actual uh, buildable lot line for the subdivision, is that currently where the, the, the back of the building is, or is there um, it's a, it's opportunity? A, it's, it's the back of the, of the parking that's adjacent, more adjacent to the building. So there are just a few feet. We're yeah. not talking about tens of feet that the building could be pushed back. No, it's a okay. few feet, yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Um, and there was a question too around the uh, heating type, whether you are planning for gas or electric. I know that we asked you some other HVAC questions. I don't know if you have the answer for that now or if that's something you want to come back with. We'll, we'll come back with. Okay. We'll, we'll give you a full you know, assessment of what we want to do with okay. all the mechanicals, including appliances. But we, we're going full Energy Star. I mean, we're trying okay. to really make it as clean as possible. Okay. Um, and I think uh, there there was a, a good point about um, the EV charging station for three units. Um, we don't always make that a requirement, but we can talk about that as a board. I will add that to our list here. Um, Great. Uh, so, if I can turn this back to the board, uh, the first item, perhaps since we just discussed it, was around how how far uh, back from the street. I believe that right now this is roughly in line with the CVS building, the front facade. Um, Jean, you had asked a question around whether or not, as a as a board, we would want them to push this back. It doesn't look like there's a, a lot of space to to do so, so it would really be um, thinking about the width, which again is a challenge on the constrained site. Um, so I just wanted to open with saying that I, I'm comfortable as where the building is, is sited. I think that rhythmically it um, it makes sense given that we this is a mixed-use building, but I wanted to, to get your perspective. My perspective is a little bit different. Sure. I'm interested first to know health of the scotch pine mm -hmm. because if it's not in very good shape then I don't think I feel like I need to deal with okay should the building be moved or not so I think that's something I'd like to hear from uh, the town tree warden when he has a chance to look at it and see what he says if, if he says it's in good shape and he thinks it's a valuable tree then I think we do have to have the discussion about whether it can be preserved. So I think probably the four parking places behind the building are, I don't know, 20 feet, something like that, in length. Yeah, they're, I think, 18. 18, yes. thank yeah. you. So theoretically, if the building were pushed back there, they could, I don't know if the tree could be saved anyhow. Well, and, and I guess that's my question, and maybe maybe that's for for, for yeah, you to as that. to, well, it's not just about that, it's about legally with the way that your, um, the buildability and the, uh, again, I don't know what the easement right. is in the, which in the we, lease, and whether, again, if that's something, again, the board had talked about perhaps and that planting that's those four yeah. spaces, but I don't know, and you would need to tell us: is um, is it even feasible for 
for um, that to be built built out. If, if it was determined that those four spaces are in fact not needed, is that buildable space or would that at most be available for landscape space? It looks as if the leasehold line is on the far side of the four spaces. So right, the four on the back side. Yeah. Right, so yeah. the four spaces are not. That's what I had asked you before. Was it on the front or on the back? You could see it there. Yeah. It's not in the CVS leasehold, so they... That's helpful, that's different. Yeah. That, that's the question I'd asked you before, and, yeah. and what I heard was it was on the Mass Ave side of those parking well, no, spaces? No, this is no. the back, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so that's, that's why I, I raised... Thank you for the clarification, it's a possibility. But just a point on that is that, you know, and again, we just were asked about trash, you know, like obviously we're gonna need to show you trash, right. so we have to be cognizant of where that goes to, mm -hmm. so let's right. just keep right. that in mind. Right. Understood. But again, I think the first, for me, the first step is, is the tree in good shape I agree. or not? And then even if it is, if they do construction, even if they move the building back, you know, the tree might yeah. not survive. So that's the other thing I would want to talk to the tree warden. Uh, there's a, 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 a full basement that's completely mm -hmm. underground being mm -hmm. anticipated right. on the building, regardless of the right. footprint of right. the building at this point. Right. Um, that, you know, excavation and impact is going to be substantial. Well, this is why, right, that's the other question yeah. really. With the, the armor. Yeah. Right, so, I mean, I think that's where I am. I'm not asking him to move the building back at this point. Okay. I think we need more information. Great, thank Once you. Once she comes back, I'm happy to meet with him. Yeah, I'd like to be there too. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Okay, uh, Steve, any thoughts so on that with, topic? With regard to the placement of the front building line, um, I went to take a bit of site visit over the weekend, and um, I think my observations about the tree were similar to Mr. Benson's. I saw a lot of dead wood, brown, uh, a thinning, browning canopy, and you know it cast no shade at all of the public area. Um, I would be very surprised if the tree, to, to my layperson's eyes, it did not look like a healthy tree. But I'm, you know, I, I'm willing to hear the, the tree warden's opinion. My inkling right now is I would rather have the building uh, up forward to the sidewalk. Great, thank you, Shana. Um, I think I am in, I think I have a similar position to, to Steve. Uh, I'd like to hear from the tree warden um, I have a sneaking suspicion that what we'll hear is that is that the tree is not in great shape um, and that it wouldn't survive construction. Uh, and I, I do prefer the building closer to the street, but let's wait and see. I do notice that there are four existing red maples that um, would be lost, uh, it um. looks like. Um, they're actually red cedars. Red and they're cedars. in terrible shape. So, you can go look at them. They're, okay. If they were running around your house, you'd take them out. Okay. I was going to say it looked like it looked like if the building were moved back, there would be four trees lost that are currently slated to stay. But if they're in terrible shape, it's kind of a moot point. Um, yep. So that's where I am. Let's wait and see. But. But my inclination is probably to leave the building where it is. Thank you. Uh, Ken, any thoughts other than what has already been? No, my thoughts are that I feel strongly that uh, we should leave the building up, up front to activate the street, not push it back. Uh, I'm no expert on trees. I'm gonna let let them decide what that is, but I still, I like the offer of um, if someone wants to take the tree, go ahead and take the tree and replant it somewhere else. Or uh, use the wood creatively. Mm -hmm. Whatever. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it was right. Transplanting is really not Transplanting really is not an option, but yeah. great. Uh, uh, but, but, I, but, I thought that was a creative <laughs> suggestion as well. Yes, but you know, great. I also want to mention the fact that um, the owner here, had offered the house right. to the public several times. Right. Uh, way back when the first thing was developed, uh, three years ago, two years ago, if anybody wants the house, he has it. Just pick it up and move it. 
and I have not seen anybody want to do that. So I think, you know, uh, you know, if you feel strongly about the tree or the, the house, come get it. Uh, I don't want to sacrifice um, activating a streetscape for this. That, that's, that, that, that's really important to me, of, of, of having a vibrant street and where people want to live and walk. That's the kind of community that I'm looking for. Uh, so I'm just saying that's my opinion. Thank you, Ken. Uh, I think we also um, really covered the, well, there was a question around, around parking and whether or not um, the reduction of those four spaces was something that the board was interested in seeing the applicant um, uh, pursue. So I will throw that out there starting with Steve. So to the, you know, my first inclination would be, you know, if you can, if it's, you know, to, to at least give some consideration to depaving that area and turning it into a, a, a yard. Um, but I would pr I would prefer fewer parking spaces than uh, than more. <laughs> Gene, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, we're landscape architects, and we'd love to see more green mm -hmm. around the building. Anyway, uh, we will look seriously at the need for those parking spaces and whether. They should be, you know, landscape area. That's fine. I think that's a good offer. We should accept it. Great. Shana, any other thoughts on that? Uh, no, I think that's great. Yeah. Oh, I, great. I agree with that. All right, and I think those were the only two items we had for discussion. Any thoughts before I run through the uh, list for our um, next meeting? And then what I would want to do is take a look at the calendar with you all and uh, identify how much time you think that you need to prepare the um, the next package to make sure it's something that you feel comfortable with okay. before we set that date. Uh, so any other any other thoughts from the board before I start running through my list, starting with Steve? Jean? No. Shana? I do think the idea of reusing the tree is a really interesting idea and, and might think about it in the interim. I have no idea what pine can be used for, except I think they use it for telephone poles, um, but probably they're a bench or a something, something say, interesting. Maybe the, the Schwam site. Mill? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just think of having that tree made into a, a bench, bench that could sort of sit mm -hmm. in that place. I mean, if you ever read, I believe it was Silverman's The Giving Tree. Yeah. I mean, it just. Thank you. It makes a lot. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. So uh, let me run through our list here. So um, we have uh, the uh, to come back with the required materials. Um, so we have uh, we will certainly uh, follow up with a, a list of those. I had run through them yep. earlier, and I think um, notes were taken there. Um, uh, Ken had requested uh, the, a shadow study looking at, at um, the three-story versus uh, if it was a five-story. Um, the uh, adding the dimension showing how far the building is from the church. Um, so making sure that on the site plan that all of the dimensions are shown there in addition to on the survey. Completing the solar assessment and uh, showing 50% of the roof um, as uh, as uh, accepting solar uh, unless you meet one of the uh, one of the uh, conditions appropriate for a waiver. Um, coming back with a point of view on the uh, office tenant in terms of uh, how you will be uh, marketing and leasing that um, lease ex excerpts regarding the retail restrictions, the leasehold lines, and the easements uh, to access the lot through the CVS. Uh, reviewing bicycle parking, both in terms of short, long-term parking and the requirements uh, for, for both. Uh, the same uh, is re-looking at the calculations for the open space numbers. I think it was shown as not applicable and there, there is open space required. Um, that, that's what I was confused because when I looked at the dimensional requirements under the B4, it said none required. You, use, uh, usable open space is not required. Landscaped open space, there, there is a requirement. Okay. Yeah, uh, 
please, if you could just look at it again. Um, if, if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, no, but no, I, I believe I did sure look at that earlier, right. yeah. earlier today. Um, uh, also come back with how you calculated the FAR and gross floor area, um, especially given that this is one lot with CBS. Uh, providing a walkway from the front to the rear of the site. Um, include the tree, the letter from the tree warden, and obviously um, it sounds like uh, Claire is going to be coordinating a, a meeting on site with the, with the tree warden. Um, take a look at for the length of the entire lot along Mass Ave, uh, ensuring that the uh, requirement for uh, public shade trees every 25 feet is met. Uh, coming back with um, uh, showing us where the mechanical units will sit if they are sitting on site on the roof. Uh, also citing the trash uh, enclosure on the site. Um, on the uh, roof, again, also looking at, at venting to ensure that that works with the solar as well as the mechanical units. And the, um, the uh, the roof access for the, the tenants. Um, look at signage for your office tenants. Um, and also whether or not you uh, would uh, be looking at an EV charging station for um, for your tenants as well. That certainly would be a selling feature. Okay. I, I had a couple more. Yeah. Sure. Um, the yeah. railings for the roof deck. Yep. The parapets. Yep. Um, the lighting plan and fixtures, the photo photometric plan yep. fixtures. Yeah, I have that in my list, the oh. long list. So in that I have photos of existing conditions, yep. context of surrounding uh, uh, streetscape in yep. your drawings, right. um, facade materials and color samples, mm -hmm. the rendering lighting plan and fixtures, the lead checklist, uh, signage plan storm and your stormwater. Yeah. Stormwater. Now on the stormwater, and we've, we're dealing, we have a civil engineer working on yes. this. Uh, who, uh, is aware of the bylaw and everything. But we were waiting to do it until we knew basically what size and configuration the building was in order to both locate any subsurface, you know, infiltration facility, as well as to know the amount of potential volume of water we're right. dealing with. So how will we do that? So I think what we typically look for here is a site dra drainage plan. We like to see where where the water is is going in terms of actual proving approving the final stormwater management plan yep. that will be done through uh, through the department that you're you're already uh, planning on engaging with. Can I know that um, you you typically take a hard look at the the, the site drainage? Um, yeah, you, you have a retain uh, a retained area already on the site. If you look in this one site, it may be as simple as connecting into that line there. So we'll, we'll have the civil engineer but, look yeah, at let the engineer yeah. take a look at that and yeah. then if if need be that they might have to open up the, if there's not enough they might have to open up the, the, the parking lot and put some call tech, uh, call back well w w w in initial conversations with the civil engineer he felt that uh, if there were a need for call tech infiltration Yep. that it would be under those four parking spaces we're talking mm -hmm. about. Yep. But regardless of what the surface treatment is there, that's right. the, that, that could be, be the place, place for that. Sure. And I think that's what we'd be looking to see, yeah. is is where those bigger moves are being made Fine. so that we can really understand um, where the water is going and to make sure that it's not going to uh, I, I off of the site. I think if we show you a, um, have the civil engineer based on the data that we have now produce a preliminary stormwater plan that shows you these things. He can elaborate it further for the DPW. That would be that would Is be that sufficient for our okay. purposes. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. yes. Thank you for the question. Okay. Um, I do have one. Yes. Uh, I definitely want them to look at uh, expanding the front elevation on the lower floor for for uh, the office space. That. So that maybe when you're looking at your stairs or pushing or something, just look at it. I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm just saying I think you should better opportunity to have a big uh, activating streetscape there. Uh, and say, you know, if you say no, that's fine. But I just want to. We'll, we'll, we'll look at it for sure. Great, thank you. And then I think the last item, again, whether it's a condition of the permit or something you look at as part of this application, is also um, ensuring that the, um, the, uh, the uh, fence between the, the two sites is in um, is maintained in um, uh, 
uh, now I have a question about the lead checklist because yes. I preliminarily filled it out yes. just for my own yep. purposes. Um, but there is no lead requirement. We're there is no, you are not required to submit uh, for the certification. Right. You are requ required to um, employ strategies that would um, that would meet, I believe it's lead silver. Um, so the so the point system and the checklist is used to evaluate that. Correct. Okay. All Correct. Right. Right. So we are we are looking to ensure that between and again you're in an you know in a in a very well served site by transportation there there you know it's it's um it should not be an onerous um, checklist as you probably know already from no, having. Oh yeah, I mean there's just a few items on there that I didn't really or wasn't able to answer. I think most sure. of them are pretty straightforward. Right. So that's really what we're looking for is that you are um, working towards that that lead silver. Okay. Um, certifiable yeah, rather yeah. than certified is what we are yeah, that's uh, right. looking for. Steve? Just uh, one note on open space. Yes. Um, although all of the requirements are given as percentages, in the residential districts it is a percentage of gross floor area, right. but in the business districts it is a percentage of lot area, which is a little sort of buried down in the B district dimensional tables, but I'm just... Yeah, it's a footnote. It's a footnote. For you. And it's 15 percent, I believe. Yeah. 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 What your requirement is. Great. Uh, anything else before we look at a date? Claire, did you have anything either? Nothing. All right. Uh, so let us look at um, a calendar and identify um, when you would like to come back in. Yeah, there's a. It's not just us. It's a. And I understand you have, con you know, you have other folks sure, that you I'm need to. I'm going to need a photographic plan. And, yeah. You know, there's yeah. a lot of consultants right. or, or other that right. I need to bring. So I'm up. assuming the 15th, which is in two weeks, is not no, not, probably not something we're going <laughs> to aim for. Okay. So our meeting, we only have one meeting in August, and that is on August 5th, and then we are into September. So we have September 9th. And September 23rd. September 9th. Sorry. September 9th. Okay. We can commit to that. Perfect. Um, and if before September 9th, as that starts to approach, um, really would need to be by August 5th. If you feel like you would need some more time, please let us know, and we can always continue the the hearing. Um, you know, even as you approach that date, the night of the the ninth, we can always continue the hearing. So, if you feel um, like you need more time. for the ninth. Yes. For the hearing on the ninth. When. By what date would we need to submit to you the, the review materials? Claire, when do you need those materials? I know that there's a holiday the week before, so I want to make sure that... I, I would say at least two weeks before. So two by weeks August before. 26th. Yes. A 25, you said? Like 26. 26. 26. August 26th. And right. that will give um, <coughs> the department an opportunity to make sure, review. to review and make sure that everything is right. in order and be able to highlight anything if we need anything else. They will get posted on um, September 5th. Okay. That sounds reasonable. Okay, great. So uh, let me just get back to my agenda here. Is there a motion uh, from the board to continue docket 3798 for N821 Mass Ave to uh, uh, the evening of September 9th? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Um, yes. Know, one second. Let's hold on our vote. I'm sorry. No problem. Please so talk amongst yourself. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to be. That's fine. September twenty third. September. September twenty third. It's every two weeks, yeah. kind of. So problem. let's go there. September twenty third. No problem. Okay. I will re, re um, propose the motion. So, and, I, and I submit by September 9th. Yes. That would Please. Work. Right. Okay. So we're going to do September twenty third. Twenty third. Got it. Is there a motion to uh, continue docket 3798 for 821 Mass Ave uh, from, uh, excuse me, to the evening of September 23rd? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Sh Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank, thank, thank you very, very much. much this evening. Thank really you. appreciate you. you working with us. We'll be back. <laughs> All right. Uh, that uh, so closes we'll agenda item number one. We'll now move to agenda item number two, which is open forum. So, anyone here this evening who wishes to speak, please raise your hand. And I would. I, 
Yeah. Sure, if you would come up here, please, too. And um, please. Sorry, level four. Maybe uh, one to 55 restricted. I just have one question. Uh, so you, you're always considering the ocean canal just bad as a solution to save the tree, but there's one other direction. Why can it be considered to move it left closer to CVS as the original proposal was doing? Because that is another way. So I just wanted to see if you could conclude that and to uh, maybe request for consideration, because then you would not lose any front frontage as your concern is, you know, but you would potentially preserve the tree you know, and that could also be used as a very, very welcoming space for people to come, sit under the tree, have that would actually probably draw more business, you know, if you have something very nice and shady, which we actually don't have much on that side. So just one consideration, just consider that you can also shift it a bit to the left. To Thank see you. This, that's all. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate that. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak this evening? All right. Uh, seeing, uh, seeing no one else with their hand raised, we will close agenda item number two, which is open forum, and move to agenda item number three, which is new business. And I will turn it over to Director Ricker first. Great. Um, I did send an email to the board. Um, we did receive the Attorney General's uh, final ruling on Article 12 um, from our special town meeting last October and Article 3 from our special town meeting this past April and the MBTA community's zoning um, has been approved and accepted. Um, it is with the town clerk now. The town clerk needs to advertise it um, twice in the local paper on July 11th and July 18th. The zoning becomes um, valid on at the second uh, advertisement. So July 18th will be the day that, the, uh, that we will update the bylaw for the website and uh, MBTA community zoning will be included. And, that's a wrap on MBTA <laughs> zoning. So thank you everyone for your efforts. Great, thank you. And thank you to everyone in the department for um, all of the hard work to get to this point. <laughs> Very much appreciate it. Um, I do have one item for the board. We had uh, been discussing a potential date for a joint meeting with the select board. Um, and I uh, spoke with uh, Steve uh, DeCourcy um, about uh, their, they, they also agreed that a September date um, would, would be preferable for them. They have meetings the same nights that we do, so they had asked us to look at the Monday evening between the two September meetings that the uh, Redevelopment Board has for our, for our joint meeting, which would be September 16th. So um, if I could ask you all to review that date, please get back to perhaps myself and Claire and um, let us know if that date is, is feasible. I'm getting a thumbs up, yes, thumbs up, minute. thumbs up. Maybe we need to... Give me one second. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Claire, if that's something you could look at whether or not that's feasible for, for you as well. Sure. Okay. Sure Great. September... Nothing. Okay. Um, so... Um, Great. So what uh, I will get back to Steve, um, um, Claire. We can or we can follow up with um, Ashley. Ashley. Okay. Yeah. Great. Perfect. And we'll let them know that that, that will work for us. Um, they um, agreed that all of the, the the items that we had identified, um, you know, were are great topics to run through. The other topic that they wanted to add that list is kind of an update on um, vacant storefronts. And I said that that's something that I know that. Um, your uh, economic development coordinator is is working on quite regularly, so that might be something that they would be interested in an update on sure. on uh, what's being done there. Uh, and that's all I had. Uh, so, Steve, any anything yes. else under new business? Of course. <laughs> um, so I no this no this is um, as I was watching um, Mr. Feeney give his uh, periodic interview to ACMI, he said that the. Uh, our PAFR, Public Annual Financial Report, it's a little four-page financial summary of the town, but we do them once a year, and the FY 2024s is up. Uh, so I went and take a, took a look at this. It basically compares us to uh, some statewide averages and what's known as the Town Manager 12, 12 communities that you know uh, town management thinks of as similar and judges us against, um, or compares us to. So in terms of new growth, we had 0.8%, which means of those 13 communities, we were last. 
and it was our fifth year in a row at being last. <laughs> so, um, ouch, but fortunately, um, we did pass an override uh, this past year, and um, I guess we'll, maybe, maybe in future years, we can do a little bit better on the new growth front. Great. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Gene, any, any new business? I do have one thing to mention. Okay. Um, some of you, or all of you, may remember that months ago, David Morgan, the environmental planner, came and talked about revising all the open space things. And we said, not ready for prime time, but I agreed to meet with him and work on it. So he and I met about a week ago, and we're hopefully going to move forward with something that might be ready late fall, I think. Great. It's more discussion. Just a, one of, um, in terms of open space regulations, I was recently reading Cambridge's, um, their Cool Streets Initiative. Um, you know, it's, I, or Cool Streets, Cool Score, it's sort of like their version of Somerville's green zoning, but, mm -hmm. or green score, but where green score tries to go for permeability and vegetation, um, the Cool Score is focused on uh, reducing heat island effects. But since you're talking, it would be, you know, you might want to just take a look at it and kick it around. Great. Thank you, Steve. Shana, any new business? None. Kim? No. All right. Uh, so with that, I will see if there is a motion to adjourn. So motion. Second. Great. I will take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.